welcome to part two of chapter 9.3.3. This time we're going to focus mostly on our formula here, n lambda d sine theta. Uh, this is mostly used for our diffraction grading calculations, so the two um, ideas are sort of combined together here. Um, quick little review of what we talked about last time, which we're going to study a little bit more of this time is the two main relationships is as the number of line increases, then the angle, so we're looking down here in this little bubble over here, then the um, angle theta also increases as well, and also the, um, the separation also decreases as well. Okay, so line increases, angle increases, slit uh, separation decreases. Okay, let's look at some math to see how all of that works together. So we've got monochromatic light of lambda 400 nanometers. That's essentially red color light there. And it's incident upon a diffraction grading of 100 lines per one millimeter. So essentially there is a diffraction grading, it's one millimeter. There's 100 lines inside of that, okay? And then we've got some red light that is going uh, into that. Calculate the angle of the first and second order maxima. Uh, sound is a little bit like we're talking about Star Wars here, first order. Um, so what's actually happening here is that, so we sort of imagine that there's this um, diffraction uh, pattern here. There is our first order maxima there, okay, or the first point of destructive interference. We're measuring from here that angle right here going out. Okay, so what does that look like? Uh, first off, what we want to do is you can separately calculate separately calculate D. So remember the slit separation is that it's within one millimeter of space, and there's a hundred divisions within that. So one millimeter divided by a hundred is going to give us one times ten to the power of negative five. And so we substitute that value of D in. Okay, it's just substituting, substituting. Okay. There is our wavelength, that's the first order, or n is equal to 1, so that's 2.3 degrees is what we get. Again, we're just changing up uh, n to the second order, and then we get the next angle, okay? So really, uh, what we're really saying here is, uh, if this was the diffraction grading, okay? So we've got our pattern here, and then we have another pattern here. Okay, so the further one out right here to that measured from the center is 4.6 degrees and the one in between that, so I'm just going to use a different color, this one is 2.6 degrees. Okay, so that makes sense. The further out it is, the wider the angle is going to be. Okay, now let's compare that to a similar situation as above. So we're still using red light. Okay, so let me do this in red. We're still using red light. We're still using, um, uh, no, we're not using the same number of lines. We're changing the number of lines. We're gonna go with 600 lines this time. So uh, remember what we mentioned earlier, the patterns that we talked about, we're increasing the number of lines. It's going to increase the angle for all the different maximas, and it's going to decrease the separation as well, okay? So we're not really gonna see the decrease in the separation. Uh, no, actually, we are gonna see the decrease in separation. There it is right there, okay? So uh, increasing D is going to decrease this value, okay? Before it was, uh, uh, I think it was one times, yeah, one times 10 to the power of negative five, and now we're down to the negative six, okay? So we're seeing uh, number of lines increasing, D decreasing as a result of that, okay? And then we can also compare, once we make our substitution within this, okay? So this sort of makes sense, okay? When you look at the, the basic fundamental formula here, uh, N lambda, and then we have D sine theta. So as D goes down, and if both of these are kept constant, then sine theta has to increase to compensate for that. And that's exactly what's happening, 13.6 degrees, whereas before, I think it was 2.6, excuse <coughs> um, 2.3. Oh, okay, I need to get some water. Um, so, um, 
So next one, we're at n equals to 2. I'm going to walk over and get some water while I'm talking. Um, same thing with the slit separation, 1.7 times 10 to the power of 6. And then we're getting 20.1 degrees. OK, that's better. Um, and then before, if I remember, the angle was about, was it 4.6 degrees? So roughly it was double that, yeah, 4.6 degrees, OK? So that's the comparison, 4.6 degrees, that was with 100 lines, 28.1 degrees with 600 lines, and then for the first order, um, 600 lines, 13.6 degrees, 100 lines, 2.3 degrees. That's kind of ugly, isn't it? OK, 2.3 degrees. OK, uh, our next question here is, so I'm just going to clear up this little bit of stuff right here. Use a gray line to kind of separate the stuff. Okay, So what is the highest order maxima that can be seen? The hint here is that um, the angle can only go so far. Okay, So again, if you think about uh, this particular example right here, right, the angle gets bigger and bigger the further we go out, and then it's going to reach a maximum. Okay, It can't bend around that corner. So really, our maximum angle is 90 degrees, our right angle. And so that is actually our hint when you think about the physics of what's going on there. Okay, So uh, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. I'm just going to separate off the question and our two different ways. So we're going to test, whoops, we're going to test uh, the third node. So it's exactly the same. Um, Exactly the same situation, right? 400 nanometer, that's a red light. Okay, we're going into the third node now. So this is more or less a continuation of what's going on, okay? But we're exploring what the highest order maxima is. Okay, so we just want to try different nodes out until we get our error. Okay? And that's exactly what we've got, okay? We can see the angle is increasing. It's at 44.9, 70.3, okay? And then when we try to go to our fifth node, remember these have to be in whole integer value increases. Okay, so we can't have 4.1, we can't have 4.2, it must be the whole integer value. And that's where we get our error, okay? This has gone beyond 90 degrees, and that's why you're getting an error. Um, the alternative way, I'm gonna use a different color just to make this a little bit more um, apparent. So the alternative is to do a straight substitution just substitute your highest value, your highest angle, okay? And then what you're going to get, it looks like I'm missing a bracket here. What you're going to get then is you want to solve for n. So n is 4.25. I'm going to go back to pink here. So n is 4.25. And again, remember, it has to be a whole number. Therefore, we just round down. And therefore, 4 is our biggest value. Okay, if you really want to be safe, of course, you can test the next one out just to make sure, but um, it, eventually you'll gain enough confidence to just to make that calculation. Okay, um, the third uh, example here is straight from Cognity. Uh, this is one of the practice questions here. Uh, this is white light. So the question goes something like white light is incident on a uh, diffraction grading of 300 lines. One millimeter uh, for the entire thing, as usual. We have the zero order, and then we have the first order here. We left the R out. And we're seeing the entire color spectrum within the first order. Man, I keep thinking about Star Wars when we say first order. Um, so what we're saying here is that this angle, this first angle here up to, whoops, that wasn't very accurate. Let's go backwards instead, okay? This angle here is seven degrees. The wider angle out here, okay, and I, I know I'm purposely drawing, just being a little bit quicker, that angle is 12 degrees, okay, so there's a five degree difference, and then within that is all of the visible light spectrum. And of course, a little bit of general sort of knowledge here without even looking anything up, you know green is going to be about halfway in between that, okay? So without even doing any calculations, you should expect a value around 9.5 degrees already, okay? Halfway between 7 and 12. Now, uh, if you look up the color for green light, you might get 540 nanometers. Um, again, do your substitution for the calculations. Here, I did a bit of a shortcut. I just did that straight in for D. 
um, and we get an angle of 9.3 degrees. Hey, that's pretty darn close to um, our rough estimate of 9.5, all right? So um, yeah, feel free to use um, all of the knowledge that you've acquired, make some estimations. It'll really kind of help you guys gauge whether your answers are correct or not, okay? Always be thinking about the physics and making connections. Okay, um, something I didn't uh, mention is that sometimes, uh, I think it's the textbook or cognitive that likes to use principal maxima. It's an extra fancy word, okay? You can really do without it, okay? It means the same thing. It ref it's referring to the first order maxima, okay, or the second order or the fourth order maxima, okay? Um, just ignore the word principle, okay? Um, next up, yeah, there, there are some questions that uh, are testing you a little, a little bit further. So uh, you're given the typical situation, okay, you've got, uh, you know, like uh, 450 nanometer light, monochromatic light is being, uh, uh, what is, what's, the, what's the word they like to use? Uh, in, into, no, what's the word here? Um, up, up, uh, incident, yes, of course, incident, okay? So it's incident upon a diffraction grading, right? There's a diffraction grading here, it might be 400 lines. Um, and then, so you calculate your angle theta as we've all, always done here, right? And then they might throw a curveball at you. They might say, huh, what if the distance between the diffraction grating and the wall was uh, 1.5 meters, okay? Could you figure out if this was the diffraction pattern here, okay? Could you figure out how far it is from the central maxima, which is, uh, if we think about Young's double slit experiment, that would have been S. Okay, so what was that S equals to lambda, uh, I think it was little d over big D. I think it was the other way around. Um, so, um, right, with this particular calculation, so hopefully I might need to do, just quickly double check on that one. Um, right, so with this calculation, so if we're given theta, if we're given D, then we can solve for S, okay? This is basic trigonometry, guys, tangent, angle theta, right? You've got side, sorry, you got angle, angle, side, and side, right? So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, I'm going to erase my Young's double slit formula here. And then so the opposite side is going to be the value of S. The adjacent side is the value of D. Right, you got your angle from before. Okay, make the substitutions, make your calculation. Okay, um, that's it, guys. Um, I've assigned quite a few questions in Cognity. I think I've assigned. I think there's about 12 questions from Cognity on this chapter 9.3.3. Um, try to get maybe about five questions done before our next lesson, just to get a little taste of what it's going to be like, and they can ask any questions that. Uh, you might come across on uh, our next lesson, which for some of you guys will be Friday or Tuesday, depending on which section you guys are in, okay? Uh, look forward to seeing you guys back. Uh, good luck. Stay healthy. Stay safe. We'll see you guys on Thursday.